Hello, uh, my name is Chris Chapman with Heartland Australian Terriers and I am going to uh, attempt to do a grooming video today. Focus is not going to be on me, uh, it'll hopefully be on the dog, but uh, first I wanted to start off with just kind of showing the tools that I use um, and then we're going to do an overall groom top to bottom, uh, what I do uh, to uh, every week with my show dogs. Uh, this is something you can do every week. You could do it once a, every two weeks or once a month, whatever's best for you. But if you want your dog to look like an Australian Terrier, feel like an Australian Terrier, have a coat that, look, that works like an Australian Terrier coat is supposed to work, uh, then this is how you do it. And there's, this is Wasabi. This is our boy we're going to use for the grooming video. Um, <clears throat> but right off the bat, I want to start off with the tools that I use. I've got six tools. Um, the tools that you use may be different. These are what I use, um, and you know, just generally speaking, uh, they work great for me. So uh, let's start off with the pin brush. Uh, this is just a pin brush. There are no bristles other than the wire pins. Uh, I find this to be the best thing to do the initial brushing on a dog. You should always start off by brushing your dog before you do anything else when grooming them. So I always start off with the pin brush. Um, and then I have a comb. I am fond of this one. Uh, the bristles or the, the tines on the comb are not sharp, so they don't scratch the dog. I can do that on my hand and it's okay. Uh, it's got a wider teeth side and a finer teeth side. I use the finer teeth side more than the wider teeth side. Um, then I've got uh, two sets of shears that I use. This is a set of thinning shears. Uh, there are different kinds out there. You just need to find the ones that work for you. I like these for most of my cutting as the, uh, uh, they don't leave a choppiness to the cut that you see in the groom. Okay. Uh, and then I've got uh, these little scissors and these are cheap little Fisker scissors from Walmart, but they are great for getting in and getting like an individual little hair or little tuft of hair that you want to take out uh, like a little whisker or something. Uh, they can they allow you to go in and do very fine details, but you have to be very careful with them. They are very sharp. Uh, you don't want to ever hurt your dog. <laughs> um, then down to the tools that I use for actually stripping. Uh, I use this, uh, this is a Flamia and Jabs, yeah, Flamia and Jabs uh, grooming knife. This is the fine tooth version, which is denoted by the red handle. You can buy these on Amazon. Uh, there's a blue handled version that has wider teeth. I find that I never use it. I use this one for almost the entire groom. Now we'll talk more about that while I'm using it. <clears throat> and then last but not least, I use a latex glove. Uh, this is something that allows me to uh, do finer plucking uh, after I've done the overall stripping. So <clears throat> we're gonna use these tools today and I'm gonna put them over here in my little caddy, get them out of the way so that uh, we can then move on to actually grooming wasabi. So uh, this is wasabi. Now I have already brushed him out and combed him out uh, because uh, in the interest of time, okay, I put him on my grooming table here and uh, he's a very good boy. Yes, he is. Uh, and we just get him ready for this. And of course, like I said, you should always start with a brush. And since he's been brushed, this will be very easy. But the point is, is that when you pull your brush through the hair, there should be no obvious mats. Uh, you shouldn't hear anything clicking. Like, see, there's a little bit right there uh, where, you know, it catches. Once you've gotten to the point where there's no, the brush isn't catching on anything, you can go back through with a comb like this and go through all the hair and make sure that you didn't miss any mats. See, like there was a little catch right there. Okay. And just make sure that everything is brushed and, and combed out. Then I start on the actual stripping. I start, I, I work from the back first. Now, one thing about stripping. The whole point of this is that we're going to be pulling hair out Okay, first of all, we only want to pull hair out that's ready to be pulled out. Uh, second of all, we don't want to cut the hair. Okay, so when I use a grooming knife, grooming knife should be dull enough that it does not cut the hair. 
Um, some people don't like using a knife for this. Some people use stripping stones. Uh, some people will uh, actually get like pumice stones and wrap them in tape so they can get hold of them and grab that. Uh, other people do it completely with their bare hand. Other people will have finger cots that they put on their fingers to give them a good grip so that they can pull the hair. Whatever works for you is what you should use. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. There are more than one right way to do it. Um, you should do it the way that works best for you. Uh, in this case, <clears throat> this is what works best for me. So I always start off way up here, right behind the ears, and I start working my way through. Now, I've been, he is very well groomed right now, so there's not a lot of top coat that's gonna come out. We will see some undercoat, okay, which is this fluffy stuff here, okay, and that's okay. But he does have a little bit of top coat coming out, which is good. Uh, I wouldn't expect there to be a whole lot because I do this every week, okay? But the whole point is you grab the hair and you pull. And if you're pulling, you'll see hair on the other side of the blade. If you're cutting, you won't. So you want to, I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but I am pulling the hair, okay? And <clears throat> that is what we want to do in order to get a good coat. Now I work my way, since I do this weekly, I don't worry about it being perfect. Um, it doesn't take very long. I work my way in kind of a pattern. Uh, you can think of it like mowing the lawn or whatever you want to do to make sure that you have pulled hair all the way through. But you can see this doesn't bother him at all. Okay, he's very used to it. It doesn't bug him and you can see the hair I'm pulling out and there shouldn't be any hair that I'm pulling out that isn't ready to be pulled out. Good boy. And I will probably do this more than once but the whole point is that I am grabbing hair and pulling out hair. Anywhere that I see any little bumps where it looks like hair is longer than other places, I'll come in and go after that a little bit. Good boy. You should look at the camera, not at me. See, I'm getting a little bit more undercoat out. I find, you know, different dogs, it depends on uh, what you get. Some will have a lot of undercoat, some will have less. I have dogs that it grows really slow, I have dogs that grows really fast. It just, it's totally individual to the dog. Now, as you do this over weeks, and you may find the first time you do this, your dog has a blown coat, and you pull up, pull out all of it, um, and that's okay. Um, as long as you're not causing them any discomfort. Now, <clears throat> if your dog's not used to this, they may let you know that they feel like it's uncomfortable anyway. Uh, there's a difference between it being uncomfortable and being painful. You may have to do it a little bit at a time for a while to get them used to it uh, so that they uh, <laughs> find it uh, to be comfortable. But, you know, I've got dogs that if, they, if I let them, they'd go to sleep while I was doing this. All right, so that is most of the top coat. Now, one thing I get criticized on my grooming for is that uh, I, you know you're not supposed to have a line here. It's supposed to be blended into the furnishings, and uh, the way you do that is you bring it down. I get nervous about that because I'm always afraid I'm going to take off too much furnishings. But at the end of the day you want to try to blend it in so you don't end up with a line on the furnishings. And uh, I'm sure that I will get more criticism because I'm probably still not taking off enough. <laughs> but as you can see, I take off a little bit and 
I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now we're going to do the tail. Okay. I start off just doing the tail exactly like I do the jacket. You just kind of start at the base. You're going to work right from the jacket into the tail. And be careful, the tail is sensitive, more so than the jacket, okay? But if you're gentle, you can come down here, grab any hair that's sticking out, and pull it out. Good boy. And if he wants to sit, that's fine. We'll work with him. Good boy. And work our way down the end of the tail. Okay. Now, and then we'll go to the back of it and do the same thing. And I have to capture any hair that is sticking out. Now, the way that I like to do this, or the pattern that I have fallen into, is that I will start at the back of the dog and work my way forward. So this is Wasabi's tail, and if you can imagine for a moment that it looks like a carrot, uh, with the thicker end here and the the thinner end here, that's how you want the tail to look, is like a carrot, okay? Um, and so the, his looks very nice. Uh, we'll come back and fine tune that in a little bit. But now, we're gonna work on his feet. Yes, we're gonna work on your feet, good boy. So like I said, I work my way from, once I do the coat, the jacket, okay? Then I work my way from the back of the dog to the front of the dog. So <clears throat> I'll start with one foot, I'll bring this up, and from now the dog's foot is a little bit different and he's kind of showing you here <clears throat> these are the toes okay and this would be the human foot okay and this little knob back here would be the heel okay the knee is located up here all right and that goes up into the hip all right so we want everything from his little heel here to be generally short okay above that is his furnishings and we want to leave those alone okay so what I'm going to do is have him stand and I'm going to take this and I'm going to work with the grooming knife to kind of go down the back and I'm going to be very careful here because you know just like our feet there are little things you know ridges and things that can stick out and the knife can catch those and you know we don't want to hurt him you want to be Gentle but firm. Okay. And we work our way. Sorry if I'm in the way. Good boy. Good boy. And we just kind of work our way down the foot. Now, while we are here, I have the these little scissors. Okay. We are going to check paw pads and make sure that inside his little paw pads there's nothing in here causing him any discomfort. Uh, Australian Terriers are very stoic and if they get gum or a rock or whatever stuck up in here they'll go for a long time and never even limp. You'll never even notice. Okay, uh, Even if the hair gets matted up in here you won't be able they won't give you any indication that there's a problem. Okay so <clears throat> you do got to check that. Okay. And then what I do is I just clear the little hairs from around the paw pads just to make sure that they stay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you going to go to sleep on us there, buddy? You probably ought to stand up. There you go. Good boy. All right. <clears throat> so that's one foot. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here to the other foot and do the exact same thing. Now I will probably do, from this point forward, just the side that you guys can see, so that uh, for the purposes of not making you waste your time watching the video while I'm doing a side that you can't see, okay? But I'll go ahead and do his other back foot, and that way I can at least say that the entire back of him is done. Now, the speed that I am going, is probably going to be faster than what you do the first time. That's okay. Um, take your time. You'll get faster the more you do it. 
Okay. Good boy. All right. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that is his uh, back feet. Okay. And now I'm going to roll around. We're going to do one of his front legs. Okay. Now I'm on a little rolly stool that I like to use for this. Um, all right. So this is his front arm or his front leg. And uh, I'll kind of explain the anatomy here. These are his toes. Okay. This would be what we would consider to be his hand. Okay. This is his wrist here. Then we follow that up. This would be what we consider to be the elbow, which would then lead into the shoulder. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to brush this out. These furnishings we want to leave here. Okay. We want everything on the arm that is facing this direction to be generally short hair. Okay. So all of this should be short. We want all of this on the front to be short and we want it to be short on the inside. The only place we really want to leave long hair is above his wrist on the back. Okay. So <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is go back to my uh, grooming knife and I start up here at the shoulder and I work my way down. Hopefully you can see that okay. And gently work my way down his little arm and get the front of the shoulder here. Good boy. What a good boy. Now, for those of you who are like, you know, have trouble with, with this piece, you can kind of bring this out a little bit. And I will find myself employing the thinning shears a little bit here. Um, if you bring the arm up and kind of form the hair into kind of a mohawk. Yes, I need you to keep your schnoz out of this, okay? Keep your schnoz over there, okay? Kind of form that into... A little bit of a mohawk then you can come along with the thinning shears and kind of smooth it out a little bit but you don't need to take off very much okay Now, some people have suggested that I should have a dog that has been very ungroomed and, you know, let them and show getting them to this point. Well, first of all, that takes a long time to do, okay? Second of all, what I am showing you here, you can do every week um, on an un a dog that hasn't been groomed in a long time, and you wouldn't expect them to look like this dog does after the first groom, but after weeks of doing this every week you would expect them to start to look better okay now <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and brush out all this again okay that's pretty much his foot we will let's take a look here anything that sticks out to the side i'll do a little uh little mohawk like this and again, I'll bring in the grooming shears or the, the thinning shears and kind of you can see I'm hardly taking off anything there. Form a little mohawk with my hand. I'll just grab I grab it like that. It creates a little ridge. Really took off anything. 
And then I will get this and I will go around getting little tufts or spurs as we call them sometimes off from around the edges of his feet. And I will again check his paw pads. And sorry, I know I'm, I lose track of the camera. By the way, trimming this hair on the paws also makes it easier to cut the nails. Yes, can I see your foot, please? And again, we're going to check his paw pads and make sure there's nothing up in between. All right, so that's pretty much how you do the arm. Again, this is the shoulder. You get the short hair down here, short hair down the side of the arm, short hair down the front of the shoulder and the front of the arm, okay? And then short everywhere below the wrist, okay? From the wrist down, all right? Now we're gonna do the face. All right, yes, you have a beautiful face. Yes, you do. You have a gorgeous face. So for the face, I tend to position myself behind them, okay? And I will come over here first. I'm gonna need you to turn this way, buddy. All right, hopefully you can see this, but be very careful with the knife. You're getting close to the eyes here, so you have to be att attentive of where the eyes are, but you're just gonna grab any hair that's kind of sticking out. You'll go all the way back to the ear, okay? And you'll do this down the side of their face. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. And then we'll come over here and we'll do the snout. And I bring it down like so. Okay. If there's any whiskers that are sticking out, you might want to cut those with these before you do this because you can catch them and pull them and that'll hurt a little bit because those whiskers are a little sensitive, but he doesn't really have any right now. So we're just doing that. Okay. Check his eyes for any little goobers because they all get them, right? A little bit, just like we do. And then... <sighs> We'll go down his chin. And that's pretty much the face. Okay. Now I am going to go ahead and do the other side on him because when I uh, come back with the thinning shears. I want it to look balanced, so I'll do both sides on him right now. This will only take me a second to get this one done. Good boy. Good job, good job. Okay, so now that we have done all of that, we are going to look at his face. I tend to get the little comb here and we bring the face down like this, okay? And what I like to think is that we're trying to kind of achieve a cylinder shape here, okay? So, <clears throat> If I haven't got that after after stripping already, what I'll come back and do is just at the very, very edges, I will work my way around like I am trying to sculpt. Oh, watch out. The puppy barked outside. Like I'm trying to sculpt a cylinder. And I will do the same thing on this side and you have to approach it from whatever angle works best for you. Yes, I see. Okay. I used to make the mistake of just coming in here and going chop, 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 and then chopping the, a jaw line in. And it took me a long time to figure out the right way to do this because 
nobody gives you these details that you want to come in this way to cut and follow the contour of the jaw around like this. Good boy. And again, you're not trying to take off all of this hair. He's got a lot of hair here, you can see. A lot of hair there, okay? That hair should just look naturally like there's not a lot of hair there, okay? Um, and if you groom like I just showed you, it will, okay? So that is jacket, tail, back feet, front arm, front foot, face, okay? Now we're going to go into what I use the glove for, okay? Now the glove is really just about giving you some extra grip when you are plucking individual hairs, okay? So I start off <coughs> with the ears. You might have hair that's growing off around the edges of the ears. You can see he hardly has any, okay? But I will come in here and look for anything that's sticking out, looking funny, and I will grab it in very small pinches at the edge of the ear and pull it out. Um, your Aussie may find this funny at first. You can see I'm hardly pulling out anything, okay? <clears throat> um, but they get used to it very rapidly, okay? So this is how you keep the hair off of the ears. Now, if you've got a pet and you like the hair on the ears, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. However, you do need to make sure that if they have any hair in their ears, this is a good time to clean that out. They won't like you for it because this is really sensitive. But if there are any little hairs in there, and remember, small, small little, you know, groupings of hair, uh, I'd say try to get no more than five or ten hairs in, a, in your hand at a time, and then you grab them and you pull. They won't like you for it, but they will like you for it when they can hear and they don't have ear infections and they don't have hair growing down into their ears, okay? And I'll do the other one real quick. Yes, I know, this is your favorite part. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. All right, so that's all the hair off the, off the edges of his ears. Now I'm gonna look here. And we're going to deal with his eyes, okay? So, <clears throat> all of the Aussies I'm aware of grow little hairs that get out right here in front of their eyes, okay? Right now is when you want to take those out. You just come in here and you grab any little hairs that are growing out in front of the eyes and you just take them off, okay? Good boy there. Good boy. All right. That will not only allow them to see, it will keep their expression looking bright, which is a good thing. You want them to look bright and inquisitive. And if they got a bunch of hair in their eyes, they just really have a hard time pulling that off. Uh, <laughs> good boy. Good boy. Yes. All right. So uh, I think the last thing that we're going to talk about is the top knot. So our Aussies have, are supposed to have a top knot that stands up. Okay, come forward for me a little bit here. All right, they're supposed to have this top knot that stands up on the top of their head. All right, but a lot of Aussies, the top knot doesn't stand up. And somebody told me a long time ago the reason for that. And that is because short hair supports long hair. So in order for a Aussie's top knot to stand up, and you can see he just shook his head out and how gorgeous his top knot is. Um, the... Uh, you have to have short hairs growing in to support the long hairs. If it's all long, it'll all be long and it'll all fall flat on the top of their head, okay? So what you've got to do is constantly be taking a little bit of hair out if you want the top not to stand up. So what I typically do, okay, this is my method for doing this. I don't know if it's the right method, okay? But what I do is I bring all their hair forward into kind of this, uh, you know, I don't even know what you call it, uh, <laughs> but where it's all kind of facing forward and then anything that overhangs the eyes on the front, I take that off, 
okay? So little bitty grabs of hair, I'm hardly grabbing anything here, okay? And, and even if yours is all grown out, you really don't have to do anything but grab enough to get some short hairs to start growing, okay? So I'll take all that off on the front, and then I come to the side, and I do a comb over, okay? And anything that's kind of hanging off the side of the head over here, I'll take that off. Little itty bitty bit, hardly anything, okay? But I do this every week. So I know every week I've started a little bit of hair regrowing, okay? And then I come over here and I pull the hair over to this side, okay? And I pull just a little bit out like so, okay? Now it's at this point that I take off the lead because it's now going to be in the way. Good boy. I'll get that up here out of the way. All right. And I bring all the hair on the top of his head to the back. And I bring my finger up to right between the ears like that and create that ridge at the back. And then that ridge, I take a little bit of hair out of the top of that ridge. Okay. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. All right. <clears throat> and this is a fully groomed, gorgeous Wasabi. And he has been very good for this video. And I hope that you guys all enjoyed it a lot. I will come back and do his other front foot. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Wasabi. Good boy. All right.